Welcome back, gang, for the first time and hopefully many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notifications right here, this little bell, so you can get those emails every time we go live. Peace. BoxerBoys.com live here with Kid Galahad in the Ingle Gym. I'm happy to be here, happy to finally meet you. We've actually spoken a few times, you probably don't remember, but we've done a couple of interviews with you via our radio show. But you're in a big fight. You're in a good fight. This is a, a fight that I hopefully more Americans are going to know, right? Because he is, and he signed Evander Holyfield. What do you think about that? He's good, he's good. He's, uh, his name's Toko Clary Khan. He was supposed to be a, a top amateur in the United States. He's, I think he was at, supposed to be an outstanding amateur as, the, as a pro. He signed with top rank. Uh, top rank dropped him because he got beat by someone. He shouldn't get beat by. And then Van der Holofield signed him up. So me and him are fighting for the mandatory position now for the IBF against Josh Warrington. So the winner gets Josh Warrington. Yes. And the for the man oh, so, so this is just an eliminator for the mandatory oh, spot. Sorry. This is the, for the mandatory, so this is the final elimination. Okay, so the next fight the yeah. winner gets is the title shot. Title shot in February, that's the next mandatory week. Oh, so there's already a date? I think so, yeah. Nine, is it every nine months, the IBF? So the next one is February times. And you're looking for that to take place where? Um, hopefully in Leeds, in Josh Warrington's back garden, you know. But first of all, um, got to do a number on this kid, Toko Clary Khan. Um, go over there. And uh, we're just, in the last bit now, we're just trying to finalise everything, date, venue. Um, you know, I'm ready to go. I just, you know, I hope he don't pull out. Well, he's been racking up a couple of wins ever since he signed to Evander. Have you been able to watch tape on him? Um, I've watched, I think, one, one or two. There's not much footage of him. But, you know, he's a slick southpaw, can dig a bit. Um, that's about it. So what do you think uh, your advantages are going to be? Is it just experience? I think I've, I've boxed at the higher level. I think you know. Um, I think I've boxed a better uh, opposition. Uh, I think I'm a well-rounded fighter. I'm better than him. I'm better than him in every department. You know, I can box. I can punch. I can, you know, fight coming forward, fight backwards. Everything. There's nothing I can't do in that in that ring. Um, you know, and I think um, when I put the pressure on him, I'm gonna break him. Is this the fight that I guess takes you over the top? Because you've been kind of. Yeah. Here, we've been kind of waiting for you. I mean, there was there was times I, I want to believe I remember you maybe calling Rigondeaux out a yeah. few times. I, I, I did want to fight Rigondeaux. I still fight him. You know, if he moves up to featherweight, I'd love to fight Rigondeaux. You know, he's one of the boxing legends. Um, I, I knew he was going to get beat by Lovma in that kind of fashion. Um, you know, them Cubans, they tend to fade. You know, after four rounds, they, they haven't got it in the tank. You know, and I think, you know, if I boxed him, maybe, you know, five, six, seven rounds, I'll take him out. So what sort of uh, performance are you looking uh, to put off with Khan? Is it just a win is a win? No, no, no. I've got to go over, go over there because it's going to be in his home country in the United States. So I've got to go over there and give him a whooping. You know, uh, I'm not looking for it to go on the scorecards. I'm looking to go out there and do a number on him. You know, uh, I'm taking my own referee in the ring. But it's going to be in his home country, but this is a DAZN Eddie Hearn Matchroom USA card, right? Yes, it is, but, you know, it doesn't matter, does it? You know, at the end of the day, he's from the United States. The judges are probably from, going to be from the United States, so they're going to give him a bit of a, you know, a, bit of a favor. You know, I'm, when I'm getting that fight, I'm going to put myself four rounds down before the fight even starts. Mm. All right, well, that's definitely a mentality to have to be digging out the hole from the opening bell. I do want to ask about some of the training I watched you do. You guys kept switching from southpaw to orthodox while doing pad work. What exactly uh, do you the, gain from that? This is the famous Ingle gym, you know. Uh, we, we started switch hitting, you know. Um, now you get all, all the top fighters trying to do it, you know. Crawford tries and does it, you know. Um, it was just a way of, you know, this is a, what you've seen us do there. It's a bit of like conditioning kind of, you know, switching and hitting. You know, obviously when you're in the ring, when you've seen us go up and down the line, you don't do that in, the, in a ring. But it's just conditioning, you know, getting used to it, you know, and um, practicing. So when we get in that ring, we can do it. 
So it's kind of like emulating punching and moving? Yeah, punching and moving, you know, trying to, you know, uh, condition your arms, you know, doing the puzzle, putting them down lines, but condition the arms, and up and down, jab, jab, double jab, triple jab, three jab. But the switching of the feet, is that meant for different, like from orthodox to southpaw, or is that just yeah. more kind of aerobics? No, it's, it's, that's, that's, that's conditioning as well, because if we're in the ring and I'm used to moving my feet more faster than you, and I'm making you move your, fa your feet much faster than you, than you normally do, sooner or later your legs are going to get tired, you know, and that's the kind of thing, you know, a lot of, a lot of fighters don't practice the footwork, the feet when they get in the ring, and, you know, when they get in the ring, the legs tire quick. You've got to practice it, you know. The most important thing in boxing is your feet because that can save you. That does everything, sets up your jab, gets you out of distance, gets you into distance. Is that something you've been doing long? I just, I'm curious because I figure, I guess with enough repetition, you'll be able to throw punches without being completely um, set up. Right, because most fighters, when they want to generate power, they're really, you know, in their stance and they're wide. But you, when you're doing this uh, training, yeah. you're kind of on the balls of your feet. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. So, this is this is this is a different kind of condition. Yeah, we do that as well. You know, you've got to know when to, you know, when you've got to load up in a fight and when you don't. We do pads. We do we do that kind of pads when we stood there. You know, sitting there and you know sitting down the punches. But you know, when you just caught us then, we weren't doing that. We were just going up and down the lines, conditioning get my feet ready. You know, like, it's a bit like, have you seen Loma when he trains and he does, um, he does, he does like the early shuffle, but really fast for a minute, whatever. It's a similar kind of thing. It's conditioning his feet, his movement. Okay. All right, all right. So, Mr. Galahad, so w tell us, man, what, uh, what, 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 for those that don't know, you're gonna be coming to the U.S. making your debut now, right? How should they receive you? What, what should they know about you? Um, they're gonna have to come out and, Come out and see, you know, Eddie's going to put a fantastic show on. Um, I'm going in for blood, you know, when I fight, I don't go in there to pit patter or, you know, um, just to get the W. I'm going in there to really hurt someone. Um, and make sure you all come to the fight, where, wherever it's going to be. And tune in, because it's going to be exciting. Because I know the American fans, they love blood. You know, they love, they used to love Naz and like, for instance, they were big, I think the only fighter from England to go, ever, to go over to America and conquer it was, was Nassim Mohamed from the UK. Is that right or wrong? I mean, we definitely love them. That we're, we like cockiness, you know, and Nas was blood, a show, he was a showman. The, the Americans, they love it. They love it like, you know, like Floyd, the American fans. Yeah, they liked him a bit, but they didn't really like him. Like, they liked Pacquiao. Yeah. You like, you, the American fans, they love it raw. They love, they love blood. You know, I remember going years ago over when Junior Witter boxed uh, Devin Alexander and uh, he, he got in there and he just wasn't right and it was a bit of a stink, like a stink of a fight. I just remember the fans like, hey Junior, you quit a witter and like shouting abuse to him and all kind of, I thought, fuck you now, <laughs> you know. And then afterwards, I think two, this heavyweight come on and they weren't that good. And he, got, he, he was actually, I think something like 19 and 0 and he got knocked out by a journeyman and they were like, oh, because he got knocked out cold. And I thought, fuck it now. You don't, in America, they like it raw. You don't mess about it there. Well, let's switch subjects. Uh, a little earlier, you were talking about that you picked Canelo, um, but I don't think you're going to pick him in the rematch, right? No, no, I am picking him. Oh. In the first one, I thought Golovkin would just beat him. Um, it was a close fight, weren't it? You know, the car, the, the... No, in fact, I think, yeah, yeah, I did do that. In the second one, I'm going to say Canelo and Canelo to hit him a few times. To hurt him? I wouldn't be surprised if he stops him. Oh, my next question was to say, does someone go down? I think it's going to be a clean win for Canelo, 100%. Would that erase the clenbuterol uh, uh, positive test? Because he said he's going to make it his business to come in at the same weight so that there is no doubt. But the thing is, was this, when he failed, it was this in competition or out of competition? Um, out of competition. So the, when he was boxed, he didn't fail a drug test, did he? So he couldn't have been on it then, could he? If you know what I'm saying, uh, you know. so it, I don't. I don't think. I think in the rematch it won't really matter. No. I don't. I, you know. I just think, you know, Canelo was a supreme boxer. Um, I think in that fight he had bad hands because he changed his clothes for the first time. You know, he normally wears winnings. So he normally wears Everlast. And for that fight he wore win uh, winnings, and I thought oh, he probably got damaged hands. So in this next fight, I think he'll go probably to Everlast. 
Oh, so you think the switching gloves indicated he had a pre-existing injury? Yes, 100%, you know, because he never fights in winnings. Even when he boxed Floyd, he didn't box in winnings. And winnings are known to be more, more protection. Exactly. When, when a fighter wears winning gloves, fighters know he's got bad hands or he's hurt his hands. Interesting. We just got a tip there. So in the next one, I think if he wears them Avalast, he's going to really hurt. So what if he just has an endorsement with winning? <laughs> winning don't do endorsements. Oh, there you go. Another tip. <laughs> yeah, winning don't do endorsements. <laughs> they, never endo they never give no one nothing for free. You got to pay that 300 for them gloves. You do, 300. All right, let's switch subjects to your stable mate, uh, Billy Joe Saunders. He's going to be also coming with you. So you guys are making that trip together. That's yeah. good. And be on the same card. Um, he's going to be fighting Demetrius Andre. Yeah. Uh, tough fight. Very tough fight. This, I think, he's from, I think they're from the same neck of the woods. Oh, Providence? Yeah. Um, but Demetrius, good, slick, um, strong, wiry. Um, I watched him box. A kid from England ages ago. Brian Rose. Brian Rose, and he whooped Brian Rose bad. But then again, I think Billy, Billy Joe would have done the exact same thing. Um, it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be, I think it's going to be a bit of a chess match, you know, for the first half. And then Billy Joe is going to put real, put some pressure on him. Now, you're in here with Billy. Does he have the power? Because we've seen Andre go down. Could Billy capitalize if he gets a knockdown? You don't know. You don't know with Andre the, the reason why he went down. He could have been struggling, making the one five. Where is it? One five four. One fifty four. Wait. You know, when he moves up to you know one sixty, he could be stronger. You know, um, but I tell you one thing: Billy can bang. Billy's strong. It's, it's a different kind of power. You know, his his is he's got like heavy thudding hands, but he's very fast for a middleweight. Extremely fast, and um, I've never seen a southpaw deal with another southpaw as good as Billy Joe. You know, Billy Joe is very, very good against southpaws. Normally when a southpaw, when they box another southpaw, they don't really want to do that, you know. But Billy Joe is very, very good with them. Now, normally the reason they don't want to do that is because you don't get to see southpaws often. So how is it going to be for these guys to basically look in the mirror? Well, put it this way. In the last, is it four fights? Billy Joe's boxed four southpaws. In his last five fights, he's boxed four southpaws. So how many is it Dimitri boxed? Demetrius only boxed one in his whole boxing career. You know, I think that was early on. And, you know, Billy Joe is an extremely skillful southpaw. So I think the advantage goes to Billy Joe, you know. And, um, and Billy Joe's very versatile, you know. He can do everything. You know, he, he, he can dig deep. You know, Billy Joe can really, really dig deep. But his boxing IQ is one of the best in, in boxing. If there was one thing you could tell Billy Joe to watch out for from Andre, what would it be? Uh, Andre's left hand. He's got, a, he, he's got a decent right uh, left hand, which he whoops over the top sometimes. But, you know, you can take that away from him. And I, and I believe when Billy Joe gets in there, he'll take that away from him. You know, as long as Billy Joe goes in there, pumps that jab out, you know, makes him know that, you know, He's in there to win. I think, you know, um, Dimitri is going to be a bit, you know, he's never been on a stage this big. He's in the big boy league now. He's yeah. in the big boy league, you know. He, he's, he's, Billy Joe's been there, done that. You know, in his last fight, he went over to Canada and whooped David. Yeah, all right, then Dimitri's not on the stage. Obviously, Dimitri's better than David Lemont. But I believe Billy Joe's done that before. He knows what it's like. Demetrius hasn't been, you know, he hasn't been on the big stage. Well, Demetrius had to go to the home of Jack Coulclay. Isn't that Germany? Didn't he go to Germany to win that last title, that vacant title? I don't know. Yeah, that, whatever, Jack Coulclay, I never heard of him. Exactly. I've never, I didn't even know he did that. <laughs> I've never heard of him, but it was for a vacant title and he had to go abroad. Germany, and but German, German fighters are not, they're not the best, are they? You know, they're a bit like... You know, and they, that, that would have been an easy fight for him. Shit, but wh where's this guy from? Bra was it Bremer? He's yeah. from Germany? Germany? Bremer. Yeah. yeah. The, the one Jorgen Bremer? The one in the Super Series. Yeah. yeah he super shocked the shit. I thought Robert Brandt was going to beat him, and fucking that high guard worked for him. Yeah, it did, but <laughs> it's not going to... Listen, when you're finding a southpaw, that high guard is, uh, is the... Is the best thing in it for a southpaw. You know, if you if if a southpaw would love to a southpaw would love to fight a guy who just has a high guard like you know, it's a tap. Yeah, boom, step out, step out. That's all they do. You know, but 
Billy Joe's a different level, trust me. When you, when you go over there, you're going to see. And um, Billy Joe knows, you know, he can't afford to even lose a round. He's, every round he's got to win. So, you know, I, Billy Joe lives with me in the training, you know, we live across the road. And I know what he's on it for this fight. He's on it on a different level. He's, he's even more on it than he boxed for David Lemieux. You know, he, knows, he knows he can't afford to make, you know, this, you know, he, he wants the big dogs. He wants Canelo, he wants Golovkin. So he knows he has to beat this guy, you know. And he's even been telling me, saying he wants to fight the, that's it, Jacobs. You know, he goes, oh, if I don't get, I'll fight Jacobs. He goes, then, they'll, then he definitely can't refuse me. Mm -hmm. Well, let's switch subjects one more time. Uh, we have, obviously, Tyson Fury. who's going to be taking a fight tomorrow yeah. versus uh, someone. But the rumor is uh, Deontay Wilder's coming to commentate, yeah. and they're going to announce the fight. Yeah. A, do you believe that that fight is really going to be announced? I think it is. I think it's going to be announced. And I've got a feeling that the Warrington and Frampton fight is going to be announced as well. I've got a real, real feeling that's going to be announced as well. Uh, Which means you're picking Warrington to win because you already foreseen yourself versus him. Yes, I, I do. I believe Warrington's fresher, hungrier. Um, I don't know, you know, Carl Frampton's not been looking the same. Mm, he hasn't. You know, he's... Um, that Donair fight. I think, um, exactly, you know, people are like, oh yeah, he just beat Donair. Fucking hell. Donair's a fucking blown up flyweight and... Um, he got knocked out by the Jamaican guy. Uh, oh, yeah, Walters. Yeah, so really, if anything, he should have gone in there and knocked him out. You know, and uh, he's gone back down to Bantam to fight in the Super Series. But uh, he also lost to Jesse Magdaleno before he, exactly. before he fought Carl. Right? And then Jesse Magdaleno just got beat by that. Yep. You know, he and that shows you that. To, uh, but that was an upset, right? I remember, that kid was good, that African yeah, kid. Yeah, he was, but, but, but we weren't expecting he's that. He's a bit like Timothy Bradley. Yeah. He's not as good as Timothy Bradley, but he's oh, like, yeah, like yeah, um, Isaac, like Isaac Adobe Dog, Doggy. Something like, yeah, something Adobe. like that. Yeah, he's good. He's very good, strong. That was a bit of a shock, though. Yeah, it, it, I think. I'm sure Top Rank wasn't expecting Magdalena to lose. No, but, you know, Magdalena, he's, he's, I think he's always struggled to make weight. You know, he's... And he was the better brother, too. Diego was the one. But was the thinker one, yeah? Diego's the one that lost to Fram uh, Flanagan. Oh, was that his brother? Yeah, Diego oh, Magdalena. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I learn something new every day. Yeah, well, Jesse became a champ, at least. But, uh, all right, back to Tyson Fury. You believe it's going to happen, so um, style matchups. He has to get this guy out of the way, though. I think, really, we shouldn't get past that point, really. I think we've got to beat this guy. Because, listen, he's been out of the ring for two years. And Come when I seen it... You when seen I, his last fight? He was playing in the ring. He's I, 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 No, 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 no. I, after his last fight, I was a bit disappointed. I went up to him and I said to him, I, said, I was very disappointed in your last performance. I says, you were fucking about too much. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to go in and do a job. He's like, yeah, but, you know, the guy was like a little fly. Because, he could, I, you know, he's just running around in circles. I said, I don't care. I said, you should go in there and done a job on him. You know, um, but he says this this fight he goes he's gonna do a job on him. So hopefully, gonna see him do a do, job do, on this guy. Did you see a knockout? When's the last time Tyson had a knockout? Mm, that's a good question. It's a very good question. I think it was against that Cunningham, was it? Oh yeah, probably Steve Cunningham. Steve Cunningham, or did he box Chisora after that? But he didn't stop Chisora. He did the second time. No. The second time he did, I think. He did yeah. the second time. I think he did, yeah. Wasn't the second one when they both came in overweight, or was that the first one? No, that was the first one, I think. The first one, they were yeah. huge. Yeah. I watched that one last. I think the second one, he, he battered them and stopped them. I don't remember him stopping I think so. I'm not 100%, but I'm sure he did. No, you're probably right. You're probably right. Yeah. I could be wrong. So, you know, he needs to go out there tomorrow and do a job on this guy. A real, real job. And Like, if it doesn't knock him out, at least batter him from pillar to post. And I mean, pace, yeah, pace them. You know, all right, we know Tyson's not a one knockout, but then he is a, he is a heavyweight, and heavyweight, one shot can, can change a lot, you know. Um, but he's hard to deal with. For a, for a heavyweight, you wouldn't want to fight him, would you? No. He's it's, rangy. He's on the balls of his feet. He, he does, moves well. For a he heavyweight. He moves well, too. I can't believe he's too, like 260, sometimes 250, and he's still... He moves you know, like a middleweight. He glides. Mm, 100%. He, he's one of the boxing's... In the heavyweight division, he's one of the all-time best movers of all time. I've never seen a heavyweight apart from Arlie, um, Arlie Tyson, 
and Larry Holmes, but mostly Ali and Tyson. On their feet, no one can move like they can move. They glide, through, they glide around that gym. See, the thing is, we give a lot of credit to Tyson, yeah. but he's been hit. Yeah, he's been hit. Chisora's hit him. You know, he, he lays on the ropes sometimes. It's not the right game plan for a Wilder. Like, you know, he, he would want Wilder to cut the ring off and hopefully get out of the corner. Yeah, is Wilder big enough, strong enough to cut him off and do that to him? That's another thing, you know. Wilder, what is he, 15 stone? What's that? Yeah, about 225. 220. What? Tyson Fury fucking walks around fucking 25 stone. It's a lot of weight, you know. And the range, and it's hard to deal with someone like Tyson. Tyson Fury's got the longest span of arms I've ever seen in my life. How heavy is Luis Ortiz? He looked pretty heavy. Yeah, Louis, when he, that was a fight. That was a good fight, that weren't it? That was, uh, wow. That was... Were you mad that they didn't stop in in the seventh round on Wilder? Um, no, because Wilder, sometimes when he does look a bit vulnerable, he's just like, he can... I don't know with Wilder, sometimes he just... He looks gone, but he's not. You know, he recovers very, very fast. Um, but, you know, Ortiz... Ortiz. He's gonna say that, isn't he? you know, some people, Ortiz fans are gonna always say, oh, he should have stopped it. But no, unless he, you know, he got put down heavy, then no. He should try and continue it. Listen, they've both been fine for a very long time. You know, you can't just take the title away from like You've got to rip it away. You know, if you're box, if I, if I, when I box a, a, a world champion, I'm not going to the ring just to beat him. You've got to rip the title away from. You know, can't expect them just have a pit pyre and you know you know, won one or two rounds. You've got to go in there and win at least four or five rounds. You've got to rip the title away from him. So uh, just to close up with Tyson and Wilder, yeah. uh, which way are you leaning? I'm going to say Tyson because he's a Jippo. And, you know, Jippos, they, they bring out magic. You know, he, he, he 100% before he fights Wilder, he'll be going to a... You know, in the mobile community, they have like, um, not witches, what are they called? You know, the one who do all the, the ball stuff. Oh, like a tarot card reader? Yes. Mystic ball and reader? And he's going to work, his, he's going to do some gypsy magic on him, gypsy magic on Wilder. And I believe, you know, Wilder won't be the same Wilder when he gets in the ring against Fury. I'm telling you. No, listen, and, this video will go viral if you're right. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, listen, let me just say something. You know when our friend... Billy Joe boxed David. I seen, you know, Billy Joe actually doing some gypsy magic before the before we walked out, you know, for the fight. He was doing some ah, ah, some gypsy magic. <laughs> yeah, honestly. And he had like this he had this other guy, like gypsy priest, and he started doing all this in like all white, dressed in all white. Yeah, and he started doing all like these mad stuff before we went out the ring. And next minute, you so know, they had he, a little ritual before the fight. Yeah, and he got in the ring and I thought Phew. And I'll tell you another time when when he I was in Germany. With He's going to do Tyson. a little ritual. I, no, I was in Germany with Tyson Fury when they boxed Klitschko. And I swear to you, they did that same shit again. Some guy come in, they were doing some, some gypsy, you know, um, some gypsy stuff. And then all of a sudden he got in the ring. And, and I was for, on that performance. And I thought, Oof. And I said to him, can my next fight, can you bring that same priest? <laughs> I knew it. I was, and yeah. that was going to be my question. Are you going to do some gypsy stuff now? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do my next fight. We're flying him out. First class. So, uh, Hilarious. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, one last one. Uh, I know you got to get ready. Um, obviously, you're dealing with Eddie on this DAZN deal and, uh, in, in what Boston. What do Americans think of this DAZN and Eddie? I mean, it's mixed signals. It's mixed signals. We got, we got, you know, there's always going to be haters out there that are, like, not giving Eddie a chance just because they're still mad with yeah. the failed negotiations. But I only watch box, bo boxing. I don't, I've never watched, like, any sport. full sport of anything else. Yeah. So, for me, I, I want it. You know, yeah. I want to. The more, the better. Exactly. And I, I'm frustrated with having to watch your fight on a stream. This finally resolves that for me. I don't have to find an illegal stream or wait for tomorrow on YouTube yeah, to watch yeah. Kid Galahad or Tyson Fury yeah. versus whoever he's fighting. But, you know, not everyone is open-minded. Um, he is doing a good thing, though. In my opinion, that's why I keep asking people the questions, right? Like, for instance, we all know that Al Heyman is a powerful promoter and he has uh, Earl Spence, but he also does some sort of business with Mikey Garcia, who's a free agent. But Eddie is offering them $8 million. So it's like... How loyal do you stay to a guy 
when we're talking about career changing money, life changing money, eight million per fighter, that's a lot of money. What per fight? Is per, no, like? per fighter. So it's eight million for Mikey, eight million for Earl. Just to sign up. Just to fight, not even oh, sign up. You don't he know. just wants that fight on the zone. But what's what's uh, Al Heyman? What's Al Heyman gonna do? He's, he's gonna have to match it, is my opinion. He's gonna. He, you don't know. Al, Al Heyman's always got something up his sleeve, hasn't he? But you know, Eddie's smashing it right now. You know, he's he's got boxing in a headlock, hasn't he? Mm. You know, he's 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 doing his he's doing his thing, isn't he? It's good though. You know, like you said, the more boxing on TV, the better for, for all the other fighters. The more time, you know, the more chance of getting out there again. But I'd like, I would like to see at least Mickey Garcia go to the zone. He's my favorite fighter. From all the fighters in America, Mickey Garcia is the dog's bollocks. So you don't feel he's, Eddie, will be overpaying by giving them eight each? Love the, 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 at, the minute, at this minute of time, they are... You know, the, probably the biggest two names in boxing. Who else would you say? I, I think Errol Spence and, and Mickey Garcia. Right now, they're two hottest names. See, I don't know. I can't, every video I do, I get called a hater because I'm the opposite side of this argument. For me... Who would you say is the hottest? I mean, Mikey doesn't do the numbers. Keith Thurman did five million on TV with Danny. Mikey's never done a million. I, I don't... I believe saying, me, I don't understand. Me, me personally, you know, I think Mikey Garcia is one of the best boxers I've ever seen, technically, in every department. In every department. In every department. Every time they say this, I ask this question. Do you see Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao special in Mikey? Because they were able to move up in divisions and conquer multiple divisions. Do we see that special in Mikey? Yes, I do. I, I even see more. When I, some of the things when I watch Mickey Garcia do, I think, like, wow. He, he's just so compact, he's relaxed. He can punch, he's strong, you know, he, the way he cuts the ring off, his boxing IQ, everything he does is out of this world. You know, people think that Loma would beat him. I honestly believe he'll beat Loma, he'll batter him. But how does he beat Earl if he couldn't stop Lippinets or Robert Easter? Now you're talking about a guy that starts camp at 177 pounds, spars with Jamel Charlo, Let me tell you something, though. handled Brook. Hey, let me tell you something though, when you get in that ring, you coming down from 177, like you said, when someone hits you to the body, you're going to feel it. And how long can he make that weight? You know, can he, you know, I think he was struggling when he was making the weight for Kel. So, what you know, is it about these fights when, when guys are moving up divisions I mean, that intrigues I us? I think he's calling out the biggest fish, to, you know, because he's calling out the biggest name. So therefore, you know, all the other ones... Who else, were, who else? But who else could he call out? Who else would you like him to call out? It's not that I would Danny like Garcia's him. He's not gonna fight him. Danny Garcia don't wanna fight. But him. that's a more realistic fight, he, though, is, right? Is Danny Garcia gonna do it? No. I mean, if you're offering eight million to people, I'm uh, pretty I sure. I don't think. And 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 if you think about it, Danny's more established, right? It, it makes more sense for Mikey and Danny to be on a pay per view than for two unknown fighters to be on a pay per view. I would love to see about, it happen to see how Showtime about, works this one out. What about Mikey Garcia and Khan? That, you can do that because Khan has already established pay-per-view in America with, with Canelo and rumor 425 to 600,000. I don't think Khan will, you know, I think they're on about him fighting Kel at the end of this year, but I can't see that happening, you know. No, uh, Khan only wants it at 47. Kel can come back. I mean, Eddie says Kel will come back down. But the thing is, instead of saying no to the fight, what Khan's doing is, you know, he's making excuses in different ways. Well, you know, first of all, he'll start with one, you know, oh, yeah, we won't, I want it at 147. Then, like, they'll some, come to some agreement. Then he'll go, oh, no, I want it to be 90-10 split. You know, that's what he does. Instead of saying no, he'll mm -hmm. just make, he'll, he'll ask for things that, you know, are impossible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And... That's what he's doing, isn't he, really? He knows Kel can't make 147, but instead of saying he don't want to take the fight, he's just making him fight away he knows he's not going to make. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I was speaking to Eddie uh, in Chicago, and he said that that particular fight, um, Khan only wants it at 47. When was the last time Khan made 147? Well, for the Greco, he was 150, though, right? It's yeah. not too far off. Just saying, isn't it? It's been two, what, nearly two and a half years. 
He's never made. He doesn't make. He wants to make weight. He doesn't make himself. But that was his first tune-up, though. I'm just saying, though, isn't it? What's his next fight? Shit, what was Tyson Fury's first tune up? But Everybody, what's, nobody. What's his, what's his next fight? What's Khan's next fight? This one should be 147 versus Samuel Vargas, I believe. We'll have to wait and see. Same guy that Danny faced. Yeah, but he's. I, I actually was in Canada with him. He's a very nice kid, you know, but I just don't think he's on the level as Khan. He's tough. He's, 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 right here. he's rough and ready. But, you know, Khan, you know, I think he'll bamboozle him for the, you know, with the speed for the first three or four rounds if he can. Or, you know, get bamboozle them. Yeah, he will bamboozle them <laughs> with the speed. And you know, after three or four rounds, if you can, you know, hack it, then I think he, he'll give Khan a good fight. But other than that, you know, it's not really. Yeah. Well, thank you again for the time, Kate Galahad. Pleasure talking to you, man. Definitely put a lot of smiles on my face. Great interview.